Yo, how's it going guys? Today I'm going to be doing my Fist Weaver guide. Before I get started, I just want to say by no means do I think I'm the best Fist Weaver. This is actually probably one of my lowest rated healers I've had. I'm slowly climbing and I'm slowly kind of like figuring things out and you know having people you know help me figure some things out. I guess this guide's basically just kind of be like more basic just if Fist weaving is something that you want to play or you have played and you've struggled with it a little bit. This is a really, really standard like outline I use for when I do any guide in general. And I kind of always follow this outline, but basically I want to show you the outline in case you will kind of like want to fast forward to see where I'm going or I guess skip around. First thing we'll do with, we'll talk about fist weaving pros and cons. Fist weaving is probably in my opinion, the most toxic healer design ever to date. It is just unbelievably broken into the things it's good into and completely useless into the things it's not good into. I really just don't think a healer should exist with such two extremes where like if you queue into a Shadow Priest, for example, your your whole team is full HP the entire time and they're just getting the crap beat out of them and they can't do anything about it. And then you queue into like mages and boomkins where they actually have enough CC where you feel completely useless. I, I really don't think there should be both extremes to where some teams have no chance to win and some teams have no chance to lose. I, I really, I really don't like it. With that being said, you know, I, I think, I think Fist Weaver is super unfun to play against. I hate it myself. I don't think it's like the biggest issue in WoW by any means, but I, I do think it's really, really frustrating for people to run into. And I feel like when something is this frustrating for people to run into, it's just like, it's bad design, you know? I don't, I don't think anything should be this frustrating. Ugh, rogues. Um, either way, so yeah, the pros are when you fight like, you know, specific comps that you're good into, we'll kind of touch into it like later. Uh, you're just absolutely insane. Your team's kind of untouchable. And then obviously the cons is that when you fight the teams that have a ton of CC, um, you're always kind of out of position, very similar to Fist Weaver. You gotta be kind of in the, in the mix. So you're very easy to get CC'd. And if you do get CC'd, you basically have no healing going out. Uh, I'll go over my add-ons. I kind of go over all my add-ons, uh, every single time I do these in case you've never seen one of my healer guides, but I'm going to go through them pretty quickly. No Taint 2 is an add-on that tells you if your UI breaks, basically. It doesn't always work perfectly, but sometimes you'll zone into an arena and it'll say UI broken and it makes you reload. That way you don't get like that really obnoxious bug. Uh, in the middle of the game. Details is just my uh, damage meter down here. Very simple. Uh, diminish shows um, your like DRs basically. As a healer, it's like kind of nice for me to track like the DRs of myself and my partners to know like when people are off stun DR, when you're off sheep DR, things like that. Frame sort keeps me at the bottom of the frame so when I'm in soul shuffle when nobody gives me leader. My slot is a action bar um, add-on that allows you to copy your stuff. Nameplate buffs is my nameplate add-on. Omni bar is enemy CDs. Omni CD is friendly CDs. S Arena 2 updated by Sammers is just my uh, arena enemy arena frames. True stat values is how you see like how much of your stats are being like diminished, for example. Uh, shows you like the penalty that you're at. Trophy GCD is something for me, just so you guys can, well, something for you, something that you guys can see uh, what globals I'm using. Uh, weak auras are, you know, obviously the most broken add-on in the existence of WoW. Let's go and take a look at some of the weak auras I use. Whole new game. I'll show you guys some of the weak cars I use. So basically, I will go over them uh, one by one, and you guys can kind of look at the link. But I have a weak car here to show when my ancient teachings is active. You'll you'll have to pause and copy this yourself. This is uh, for my Chigi. When I have stacks of my Chigi, I know when I have an instant enveloping. Let me show you this link for that one. This is when I use a Thunder Focus T, and I'm playing T of Plenty. It shows like what extra buffs I get. So I have one for RSK, uh, one for enveloping and one for uh, expel harm. So I can show you guys all of those real quick. This is the expel harm one. Uh, this is the enveloping one. It doesn't look like there's a URL for this one. You'll have to ask me in stream. Um, and then Thunder Focus T, if I have an extra charge of Thunder Focus T, this only matters if you're playing uh, Focus Thunder. Shalon stacks right here. Uh, teachings of the Monastery. Shows you how many stacks of the blackout kick you have. Zen spheres shows uptime on spheres. Obviously really nice. And I'm missing two. I believe the expel harm one. I don't think I gave you this one. I'm missing uh, the stomp one right there. So just as a basic understanding of like what these weak horrors are doing. If I press stomp, I can see if I'm in my stomp. I can see how long my uh, teachings is lasting. I can see how many stacks of my blackout kick I have. And then if I use my Chi and I decide to kick. I can see I have an instant enveloping. 
And then if I use my uh, Thunder Focus T, I can see my Thunder Focus T is up and I have a free instant enveloping and I have a free expel harm. Um, and then I can use this on like an RSK, for example, and still get value out of the other two. The power of weak Rs. Let's go ahead and move into uh, macros. I don't really think I use any special macros on Monk, so I'm probably gonna blow through these. This is a help harm macro for Soothing Mist, Crackling Jade Lightning, doesn't really matter too much for Fist Weaver. And this is gonna be mainly a Fist Weaver guide. Um, and when I say mainly, I mean like 99%. I'll talk about casting weaving a tiny bit, but I don't really play it. So yeah, uh, Dispel Party 1, Dispel Party 2. I have Arena 1, 2, 3 for Grapple. Dispel Player Detox. Uh, I have a Self Soothing Miss macro, doesn't really matter. Party 1, 2, Tiger's Lust. Uh, player Tiger's Lust. I have Arena uh, Paralysis 1, 2, 3. This is a Help Harm macro for Enveloping Mist and Kick. I have a Focus Kick. I have a Cursor on my Ring of Peace, so you don't have to see the uh, little ring. I just kind of like it at my cursor. I don't know why I have this macro. This is completely useless. Detox Provoke macro, Help Harm. I have uh, Arena 1, 2, 3 Taunt bound to my RSK to try and keep pets closer to me when I'm fist weaving. I have um, Party 1, 2 Life Cocoon. That way, like, if I'm just kind of attacking, like, an enemy and one of my teammates is dying, I don't have to, like, you know, target the teammate. Let's just say this is a teammate and then press my Life Cocoon macro. Uh, I have the same thing for Enveloping Mist. Uh, I have found them to be very helpful. So, like, when you have the instant enveloping or you need to cocoon, you don't have to, like, target them and press it. It feels, like, a lot smoother in order to just um, have a separate keybind for it. But that is a lot of keybinds, so, you know, kind of on you. And, yeah, that, that's basically it. I do think that the party 1-2 macros are, are very useful, but... I understand if you feel like you can't use them. In terms of uh, stat prios and enchants, you're just kind of going like haste. Uh, haste is your best stat. You can use uh, the mana enchant on chest. I'm just kind of using waking stats. Mana on legs. Uh, you want all the speed enchants because you're just chasing people the whole game. Uh, haste first gems are pretty good. Haste enchants. And uh, I was told to use wafting on your weapon. I assume that's right because haste is your best stat. In terms of crafted gear and embellishments, there's basically three embellishments you can use. You could use the boots that give stats. You could put a precog on if you are playing Shallans, or you would use the versatility like tether, verdant conduit, I believe, or verdant tether. I'm not really sure which one is called, but the one that uh, is able to give you or your teammate versatility or whatever. Currently, I use the boots and the armor mastery for Shallans. It actually seems like people are like really quick to the trigger with trying to like kick Mist Weavers. Like you could literally channel like a Soothing Mist for one second. And they're like, oh crap, he's out of healing. I'm going to instantly kick him, you know, and it's like, nope, just kidding, bro. And then you hit him with like the fatty Shallans. Shaloons, whatever it's called. I'm debating changing these boots right here and then using the, the tether enchant instead because uh, I don't really know if I want the crit on the boots and I feel like haste is your best stat, so I might switch that up. But yeah, in terms of the tier gear, you're using everything but the pants. The tier is pretty good. So what I didn't realize with the tier, I thought, I thought four piece was initially really bad. Um, I didn't realize that the tier actually procs from you RSKing with rapid diffusion. And I often don't find myself using like a Renewing Mist to actually put Renewing Mist up. I do it sometimes. Um, and then that increases the healing done by 15%. But apparently it just procs from the RSKs. So like if you were to get like an RSK, it's probably not gonna proc on me here because there's too many people around. I can go over here. But yeah, if you're if you're to envelop someone and or RSK someone and that procs the Renewing Mist on them, then they get the Chi Harmony for, from what I understand, full value, and then it basically ends up just being free healing. There should be no one around me here, so if I do a enveloping mist, it procs a renewing mist, which gives me, it doesn't actually look like it's full value, but almost full, full value. Nope, it's eight seconds, it's full value, yeah. That is definitely pretty nice. I could just go to like a random game here. It's be between like three-ish percent healing, like around three percent healing in this game. It was almost three percent, so it kind of feels like it's just free healing. In terms of the water you use, you don't really need it on Fist Weaver, it's just there though, because people are always like, where do you get the best water from? Just the auction house, delicious dragon spittle. Spec slash honor talents, all right? This is, I don't know if I want to say a controversial one, but I think the spec is a little bit up for debate. Basically, let's go ahead and look at the right side first. I would say that there's kind of two points to play around with. Uh, these being those two points, I think basically everything else is the same. Sometimes people use Nourishing Chi, sometimes people use Calming, Coalesc uh, calming Coalescence, and they play Statue, we'll talk about that in a little bit. And then sometimes people just play Uplifted Spirits instead of either of those. I personally don't actually think Uplifted Spirits is that good. The spec that I've actually found the most success with so far, that I've liked the most, is the Tea of Plenty with um, two points in Overflowing Mist. The reason why I like this spec is because I actually feel like I end up getting a pretty good amount of envelops off from my Thunder Focus T uh, and my Chi G. So it feels like Overflowing Mist can be like pretty decent value. You could have pretty high uptime with your Enveloping Mist because you can increase them by two seconds with the uh, RSK. 
um, for every kick. Actually, four seconds. Wow, it's even better than I thought. But yeah, I was not originally a fan of Shallans when I originally played Mist Weaver. Or excuse me, Fist Weaver. The more I get comfortable with it, the better I do feel like it feels in terms of being able to close gaps in where you would have healing issues. I guess just being able to, you know, straight up save someone if you can't. And then also just like being able to stay even further ahead with the buffs that you get. The buffs that you get are really good. Um, I will show you some other specs I've tried. I've tried one one point like this, where I have uh, Focus Thunder uh, for potentially even more things from RSK and the Tia Plenty, so you get a bunch of procs. I've tried this, where the Renewing Mist that you're proccing from Rapid Diffusion have a chance to tr uh, get Misty Peaks. And I've tried Secret Infusion, which personally I have not liked, um, but Trill is also playing a bit of Fist Weaver, and he really likes it. Uh, we had a little bit of a different use of it. Personally, I just kind of used my Thunder Focus T with RSK exclusively. He actually uses his Thunder Focus T with Renewing Mist exclusively, giving him a haste buff constantly. Um, and haste is like your best stat. That's why you play Alpha Tiger. And he and he's he really likes it. So those are some different variants you could try. Nourishing Chi is bugged, and it doesn't actually put the buff on anybody except you. From what I understand, I think it's bugged. So some people play Common Coalescence and play uh, Jade Statue. I haven't tried the statue yet. I'm going to try it. Uh, I, I don't know if I really care too much about it because I feel like generally speaking, when you press uh, Cocoon, you're already safe. But maybe in like really deep damp and shuffle or something, having like that giant Cocoon feel could feel pretty good where you just kind of put the statue down. And whenever you don't have the ability to connect on someone, you just do like a 0.1 second channel soothing. You get like a little bit of a hot going and you start to collect some of those buffs you know this this uh channel lasts for what i believe is 10 seconds it might even be faster now hold on let's go and count four five yeah about halfway done so about 10 seconds i would say that the left side of this tree is pretty standard uh i've seen some different takes on talents that people want uh for example uh, i've seen some people want uh wind walking uh you could also like maybe drop a point in tiger tail sweep um if you don't want to draw off like disable or something uh currently right now i do like having disable because i feel like the people i play with are really bad slowing <coughs> mez and trill no i'm just kidding um no I, I feel like you just get kited really hard on fist weaver and if you don't have the ability to slow it doesn't feel amazing uh i think the four percent damage is probably one of the more flexible talents before i played statue and i might not stick with statue i would use uh armor and dodge when i press my wall and if i like played against rogues i would use improved detox but if you like want to get maybe a little bit more healing out of Strength of Spirit, you can maybe do something like this. I don't really think that talent point is too worth it. I, I tried Instant Envelop or Instant Vivify for every once in a while. It didn't really feel that amazing. Also, if you're like getting killed 100 to 0, actually, I think Bounce Back is still pretty bad. But yeah, this is, this is uh, basically the spec that I roll with. And if I had to get Detox now, since I'm trying Statue, because normally uh, that would be my flex point, I would probably end up dropping... I really like... The reduced cooldown on on a uh, leg sweep because I feel like it's really important to connect on people. I would probably drop a point in like that, I guess, in order to get like detox if I fight against a rogue. It's just nice to be able to dispel their crippling poison so you can stick on people more. And then in terms of honor talents, I kind of exclusively play these three talents. You could, sorry, I should say this. You you should play revival versus uh, unstable affliction warlocks, and then otherwise it's it's restoral. But yeah, I, I will almost exclusively play these three talents. I don't think I've uh, changed very often. If you have to change, like basically, let's say you're dying to maybe someone in stuns, you're dying to like sub rogues or rep pallies or something like that, um, you could try playing uh, Eminence. If there's teams with a lot of pets, I probably would never drop Alpha Tiger. I would drop Zen Spheres instead. If there's a team where it's like, let's just say it's like Ret Warrior, um, maybe even another Fist Weaver, there's only three targets, maybe four if he GGs, but basically you're not going to get a ton of value out of Alpha Tiger. You could try dropping Alpha Tiger. Generally, I think Alpha Tiger is still really good, even if there is only three targets, it just depends. And then another one that I really liked originally, like I thought this was almost mandatory, it was Fae Accord. I'm definitely leaning off of Fae Accord for what I consider to just be more like raw throughput with Alpha Tiger giving you, you know, basically bloodlust and Zen Sphere is giving you 15% increased healing as well as give your team 10% more damage. But I will say if you're if you're like kind of struggling with Fist Weaver and you feel like your Fey line's not resetting off enough, uh, I do think Fey Accord feels pretty good. And versus teams that actually kite you really hard, um, potentially Boomkins, potentially Warlocks, because they have like short uh, port, 
Uh, you could definitely try Fey Accord instead of Alpha Tiger. I, I would keep Alpha Tiger versus Demolox specifically because they have so many pets. Yeah, Fey Accord can be really nice for those teams that kite you. In terms of your healing rotation, I, I have two different uh, things listed here. It is also your damage rotation, so I'm, I'm going to kind of talk about these two together. You have, I want to say, basically three attacks, okay? You have, you have your Tiger Palm. You have your RSK and you have your Blackout Kick. The main goal of Fist Weaving is to always be in your Fey line to the to the best of your ability. Like basically, if someone kites out of your Fey line, you want to try and stay in your Fey line until you get a reset. And then you can move your Fey line basically to the next person. So like right now, we still haven't reset our Fey line. So if like someone kited over here, we would want to hit whatever we can until we get a reset. And now we can kind of go over here and then drop a new Fey line. And this is like one of the biggest mistakes I made as a Fist Weaver originally is I didn't realize that you have to be in your Fey line to reset it. I thought just having the buff that lingers afterwards is good enough. But yeah, so I would I would basically, you know, kind of like I would drop a Fey line. Someone would move out of it and then I would run out of it, uh, you know, trying to fight people. And I would notice I wouldn't get any resets. And then I would be forced to Essence Font. Now, sometimes you're going to have to Essence Font because there be, might be nothing in your Fey line um, in order to get a reset on. Either you get CC'd on it or people kite out of it immediately. In those situations, you will be Essence Fawning to reestablish your um, your Ancient Teachings. All right, so basic, uh, you know, Fist Weaving 101. It is RSK, Tiger Palm, Tiger Palm into a Blackout Kick with four stacks. And you hope that resets your RSK, and then you rinse and repeat. RSK, Tiger Palm, Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, and then you hope it resets your RSK. RSK, Tiger Palm, Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, RSK, Tiger Palm, Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick. It's super easy. Yeah, there, there's really nothing to it. In terms of healing, if you're ever out of range of somebody, and you're trying to close the distance and you have a couple globals that's when you could use like a renewing mist or you could use uh you try and fake with shallans you can reapply your orbs like while you're out of range basically like while you're trying to close the distance a little bit and then also i i would say like one of the biggest mistakes i made uh originally as fist weaver is trying to always stay on the target who's quote unquote the kill target you know let's just say that this little target dummy right here is the kill target and now he you know he demonic portals over there well if there's a whole bunch of stuff here it could be a totem it could be a pet it could be uh you know it could be another player like a melee dps you could sit here in this fey line and just start pumping them i think chasing the kill target is like one of the mistakes that i made the most uh and notice that like when i'm attacking these other targets i'm constantly getting my alpha tiger uh back up so it feels really good to like hit other targets with your alpha tiger and try to take advantage of that and then in terms of enveloping i would say unless you're like really despy you're not really going to go for the soothing mist envelops uh and you want to try and keep them exclusively with the invoke chiji and thunder focus t also make sure uh enveloping instant but now we'll go ahead and talk about the cooldown rotation. What cooldowns do you have as a Fist Weaver here? You have your walls and your diffuse, which obviously, you know, you're going to kind of use those as needed in terms of how you survive. Generally speaking, uh, Damp and Harm and Diffuse Magic will go first, um, depending on, you know, if it's physical, if it's magic, whatever. I use Fort Brew as like my, you know, my last cooldown I use. It's, it's got the longest cooldown. It's kind of the crappiest. Uh, one thing I will say about this, the Fort Brew, is it's actually usable while silenced, while the other two are not. So if you get, like, Garrote silenced, if you get DK silenced, if you get um, Shadow Priest silenced, and you're trying to use the other two CDs, Fort Brew is going to be the one that you're going to use first. In regards to, like, you know, your healing CDs, these are kind of your damage reduction CDs. Uh, you have Cocoon, you have Restoral, you have Chiji, and then you, I would say Thunder Focus is kind of one of your CDs, and Shallans is kind of one of your CDs. And you just kind of use those as needed. I would say Restoral is probably going to be one of those ones that you're generally going to use in stuns to kind of like rotate through more defensive cooldowns. So like instead of like Trinket uh, stun and pressing Cocoon, you press uh, Restoral in the stun and you kind of are able to hold those other two cooldowns. And then in terms of like using Chiji, so Chiji has a couple different ways to use it. Sometimes I will Chiji right out of the gate because I just straight up don't want to get slowed. I prefer not to do that. I prefer to get like a couple hits out with like my Fist Weaver first, I guess. I'm trying to explain this. Um, so basically you start your first global with Chiji, you start with a 
uh, enveloping mist. So, for example, like if you're on a single target here, and if I were to Chigi right now, I would have to use three globals in order to get a enveloping mist. And then I, I feel like that's kind of wasting the Chigi, unless, of course, you're using it for the slow immunity, which is completely fine. Um, but I would rather basically start the fight with like an RSK, Tiger Palm, Tiger Palm. And now if I were to Chigi right here, I can, I could Chigi and I will get an immediate uh, enveloping from that. But sometimes you can just, if you have three targets stacked up, you can Chigi and you could just press a single blackout kick with no stacks. And since you're in the Fey line, they all cleave and you could just get infinite uh, envelopings like that. So it really kind of depends on the situation and like a one or two target uh, cleave. I prefer to like use a global or two before I summon the Chi G. If three targets are stacked, you will get envelopings immediately. And that's also like a pretty decent way to just kind of like abuse getting uh, enveloping up on like your entire team. So for example, in the last lobby I played, it was against a BM Hunter, he popped like Stampede. I Chi G and I blackout kick and I envelop, I blackout kick and I envelop. And then, you know, from there I have two envelopings rolling on both of my DPS. And then we kind of like Thunder Focus T, RSK, RSK. Uh, and then you start extending those envelops, and it feels pretty good. Cocoon, uh, Restoral, kind of used as needed. Um, Dampen Harm, Fort Brew, uh, Diffuse Magic, used as needed. Another thing I want to talk about that feels like a really good um, CD in terms of survival is your Thunder Focus T paired with Expel Harm. This is insane. Expel Harm is a super, super good heal. Something that I was very much underutilizing when I, when I first started playing Fist Weaver. Pressing uh, Thunder Focus T on CD, you're going to always almost have one of those uh, Expel Harm buffs up. So you, sometimes I'll hold them in case they swap to me, but let's Thunder Focus T right here. So we don't actually hit the Expel Harm, so we'll use it and watch this Expel Harm. It heals for a lot, then puts up a shield. Like that is that is very, very powerful. Um, definitely, definitely something that you wanna be using pretty frequently. And then in terms of the Thunder Focus T in general, it is completely situational on how you use it, okay? I personally never use it with, um, with Renewing Mist, and I don't ever think you should unless you are playing Secret Infusion and you want to try, like, the Trill build. But basically, if I have really good uptime and my team's topped off, I'm Thunder Focus Teeing on CD and just using my RSK and then kind of filling the gaps with, like, what my Tia Plenty gives me. So, for example, this one is really insane. I could RSK here, Tiger Palm, RSK here, Tiger Palm, uh, RSK here, Tiger Palm, RSK here, then do a Blackout Kick, and I had a chance to reset that. So... Just doing the uh, RSKs on CD when your team is like reasonably topped off with uh, Thunder Focus T feels really good. Um, it'll constantly get renewing mist uh, procking on your team, which is giving you Chi Harmony from your two set. And then in terms of if you're falling behind and you need extra healing, then it's going to be, in my opinion, a Thunder Focus T envelop. So like, let's just say your Chi G's down, uh, someone's dying really hard, you Thunder Focus T, you envelop them here. Uh, so we got a free envelop there, so we can actually, you know, use this on an RSK. And now we also procced a Expel Harm, so like if someone swaps to us, we can Expel Harm, we get a, uh, we get a little shield up. So Thunder Focus T, definitely very important to use to either increase your damage and healing by, you know, mashing RSKs or uh, to kind of like help you recover in a situation where you are um, trying to get more envelopings up. So like... A pretty a pretty standard open opener for me is I will Thunder Focus T almost immediately after my first crane envelop. I, I use my uh, envelop and then I'm gonna RSK Thunder Focus RSK to just extend this enveloping mist. I guess if that makes sense. Like we just get a bunch of them up, and now you uh, notice we actually have another free envelop from this, so we could send that again. And then yeah, it's just it's just all about uh, you know crane, Thunder Focus, and then using using these abilities right here to. Keep yourself alive but yeah in terms of mana efficiency this is going to sound really weird but fist weavers can go oom i actually went oom a lot the abilities that are going to cause you to go oom are uh enveloping mist which is free during chiji it is not free when you use thunder focus t for it your chiji itself is kind of expensive your jade fire is kind of expensive and your essence font is super expensive so if you're getting constantly kited out of your uh stomps and you're not getting resets and you have to use Essence Font in order to close the, the gap to reapply your teachings. That's going to oom you. Um, but other than that, I'm not saying don't Essence Font. Um, but you, you basically, what I am saying is try super hard not to get out of your Fey line or hit anything that's in your Fey line until you get that reset. You get the reset generally really quickly. So like right now, we'll probably get it with this Blackout Kick. Right now, we'll probably get it with this Blackout Kick. There it is. Now you can go move somewhere else. 
And um, as you get more comfortable with fist weaving, what you want to try to do is you want to try and weave in your manatee uh, on your expensive spells. So manatee gives you mana back, but more importantly, it's going to reduce the cost of your spells by 30%. So for example, let's just say we're kind of in a comfortable situation right here. Uh, our target moved. We, we're going to go Feyline over there, but we also want to Chigi. If you go ahead and use a Manatee here, my next spells are going to cost 30% less. We can go ahead and Chigi. We can go ahead and uh, use our Jade Fire Stomp, and that's what's going to allow you to be like a little bit more efficient on the Fist Weaver is using the Manatee before the expensive spells. That That's going to be the difference uh, between Umi or not, if you are able to do it. I would say throughput first. Uh, efficiency second and then when you get like a little bit more um you know comfortable because it took me a while then then you could start worrying uh about mana like basically until you start losing games on mana uh that's when you need to start worrying about efficiency i, I guess i should say positioning there's not really too much to talk about here this is kind of an outline uh you're kind of always in the middle um what I will say is you can definitely have like a, a port like kind of like in a safe spot and you can try and like if someone's pushing in for a fear you can try and put uh port out if someone's trying to kill you you can port behind pillar cast the shillons it won't heal out of LOS but you just go ahead and get the buff up and then you go ahead and get the heal up and then you port right back in uh that's a pretty decent combo uh in terms of utility CC being offensive you're basically always being offensive on uh fist weaver if you're ever not attacking you're probably losing the game um, but in terms of your CC, you definitely want to make good use out of your ink cap, out of your stun, uh, because this like little like these little snap CCs are very very important for actually like securing kills and or keeping people still, so you can uh, continue to heal. And uh, you're gonna use ROP. So like if if you're trying to hit someone and they're like sneaking away, you want to use like ROP to kind of like block their path so that they can't get away. So you do end up getting more uptime. Dealing with kicks, it's not something really we have to talk about, but. You know, you can definitely try and fake on the Fist Weaver if you are playing precog. And one thing that's going to make it a little bit easier to fake with on Fist Weaver is if you get your Alpha Tiger up, then that's going to give you more haste. And then your Shulon's a little faster and people are going to be like, oh shit, you know, we got to kick that. And then you can go ahead and fake it. How to kite well and survive. There's not really, you know, there's not really too much kiting to do on Fist Weaver. You just unfortunately have to face tank. It's like kind of awkward unless you pour it out and you cast your Shulon's. But yeah, in terms of surviving, the, the main things that I've noticed is making sure you use like, you know, walls before or while you're off stun DR. Uh, so that diminish add-on I showed you was pretty important. And then honestly, man, I, I swear the, the the thing that has made the biggest difference for me is making sure I expel harm on CD, but more specifically with Thunder Focus T. So if you Thunder Focus T and you have an expel harm, you'll get one expel harm in between the Thunder Focus T. So you just kind of slam this on CD uh, if you're being trained. So you get that second one. And then when Thunder Focus T comes up, it'll be right off of uh, CD. Like it lines up perfectly and then offense defensive we don't really need to talk about that because you're you're not really ever defensive on a fist weaver and then in terms of the comps so fist weaving is a spec that thrives when it has support with no support fist weaving just straight up doesn't work uh, i haven't seen fist weaving played with too many casters but basically the classes you want to play with are classes that can help you get out of cc or help you prevent cc so uh, a class that works really really well with Fist Weaving is obviously Warrior. Warrior has the AoE Berserker Shout to break your fears. It has Intervene. So if you get stunned, they can intervene you and you take no damage. And what that's going to do is basically allows you to never run. Uh, Rat Pallies are insane with uh, Fist Weaving because they get you out of stuns. They got Bop for you. They got Sank for you. Uh, they got Lay on Hands for you. They got Sack for you. Uh, so basically, Rat War Fist Weave is amazing. Uh, you could also play DH uh, Rat Fist. Um, that works. Uh, as well not as probably not as strong as warrior ret but you, you just kind of mix these classes together you probably play dh war fist um you're losing out on the uh the bop here the sank here but you know you can all you could gain reverse and yeah and then we've been playing like war uh enhance uh fist and i mean we're around like 2400 by no means are we insane but Basically, melee cleaves with Fist Weaver, you just kind of run people into the ground and you just use the other classes to kind of help you chug along with um, keeping you out of CC. I hope this allows you to ruin the ladder. Hopefully Blizzard nerfs Fist Weaver because this class is actually really toxic. I will say like IQ shuffle a lot and there's definitely some times where I go into a lobby where I have my caster spec set. I'll just show this to you. This is basically my caster set. Um, cast respect. Some people might want to play Shalons. You can mess with it if you want. I basically play the same talents, except I'll probably play like R Mastery, for example. Classes I really hate playing uh, Fist Weaver into and shuffle is Boomkins, uh, Resto Druids, depending on what the comp is. And I feel like my teams can't stop clones. Um, mages, 
basically boomkins are super mobile and they have really good cc mage is super mobile they have good cc uh, depending on what the comp is, if the Residue can just be super aggressive with Cyclones, you're just going to get completely screwed over. Uh, so I'll bounce between Caster and Fist Weaver, and I do have a full mastery set uh, for when I play Caster Weaver, and I only use two pieces of tier. So that's all I'm really going to touch on uh, with Caster Weaver, but basically just understand that Fist Weaving is really OP or completely useless depending on the lobby. You know, it's it's pretty miserable. I, I really am not a fan of the spec, but yeah. Uh, I hope this helped in somewhat way, shape, or form. Uh, and good luck. Thank you for watching.